Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for this introduction, a part one covering the foundations that we use for esoteric healing. This is a series on cultivating harmlessness. Positive harmlessness is a foundation of the practice of esoteric healing. We as a group that was formed through the Moria Federation in 2014 are endeavoring to demonstrate harmlessness through our group service. We have been studying in group formation all these years as a means of progressing along the path. This first presentation has been gathered from and presented by members of the Moria Federation Global Esoteric Healing Circle. All of the materials have been drawn from the writings of the Tibetan master Dwal Kul, which were recorded by Alice Bailey and published by Lucis Trust. Comments and impressions that have been shared by our group members are noted as such with quotation marks. Our foundation, group service. I am not interested primarily in training individuals in order to make them more efficient healers. It is group healing at which I aim, and it is the work which is done in formation which interests me at this time. But no group of people can work as a unit unless they love and serve each other. The healing energy of the spiritual hierarchy cannot flow through the group if there is disharmony and criticism. The first work, therefore, of any group of healers is to establish themselves in love and to work towards group unity and understanding. This comes from Esoteric Healing, page six, by Master Dual Kool. Work as a group, loving and serving. The group mantra is with purity of motive inspired by a loving heart. We offer ourselves for this work of healing. This offer we make as a group and to the ones we seek to heal. You'll find that in Esoteric Healing on page 104. How then is healing brought about? Healing is brought about in three ways. One, through the application of the methods of the many schools of medicine and surgery, analyzed groups. Two, through the use of psychology. Three, through the activity of the soul. Soul consciousness is group consciousness. This is a comment from Vietnamese esoteric healing group member. Based on occult facts, certain things should be established as occult facts in the consciousness of the healer before she or he is able to work constructively. One, first of all, that there is nothing but energy and this energy manifests itself as many differing and varying energies. Of these many energies, the universe is composed. Likewise, man's bodies or vehicles of manifestation are without exception constituted of energy units. These we call atoms and these atomic units are held together in body form by the coherent force of more potent energies. Two, the major focal point of energy to be found in human beings is that of the soul, but its potency as an agent of cohesion and of integration is as yet greater than its quality potency. In the earlier stages of human evolution, 
It is the coherence aspect that demonstrates. Later, as man's response apparatus or bodies becomes more developed, the quality aspect of the soul begins to demonstrate increasingly. Three, seen from the inner side where time is not, the human creature demonstrates as an amazing kaleidoscopic mutable phenomenon. Bodies, so-called, or rather aggregates of atomic units, fade out and disappear, or flash again into manifestation. Streams of colors pass and repass. They twine or intertwine. Certain areas will then suddenly intensify their brightness and blaze forth with brilliance. Or again, they can be seen dying out and the phenomenon in certain areas will be colorless and apparently non-existent. But always there is a persistent overshadowing light from which a stream of lights pours down into the phenomenal man. This can be seen attaching itself in two major localities to the dense inner core of the physical man. These two points of attachment are to be found in the head and in the heart. There can also be seen dimly at first, but with increasing brightness, seven other pale disks of light, which are the early evidence of the seven centers. This is from Esoteric Healing, pages 36 and 37. Foundation, seeking alignment. Is it not true that the prime requisite of all healers is a sympathetic rapport with the patient so that the healer achieves insight into the trouble and establishes the confidence of the patient? Two words I give you which embody the requirements of all true healers and towards which you must work. They are magnetism and radiation. A healer must be magnetic above everything else, and he must attract to him, A, the power of his own soul. This involves alignment through individual meditation. B, those whom he can help. This involves a decentralized attitude. C, those energies when need arises which will stimulate the patient to the desired activity. This involves occult knowledge and a trained mind. This is from Esoteric Healing, page seven. Master Drakul's alignment is one of the prerequisites. The healer must understand also how to radiate, for the radiation of the soul will stimulate into activity the soul of the one to be healed, and the healing process will be set in motion. The radiation of his mind will illumine the other mind and polarize the will of the patient. The radiation of his astral body, controlled and selfless, will impose a rhythm upon the agitation of the patient's astral body, and so enable the patient to take right action. Whilst the radiation of the vital body, working through the splenic center, will aid in organizing the patient's force body, and so facilitate the work of healing. Therefore, the healer has the duty of rendering himself effective and according to what he is, so will be the effect upon the patient. When a healer works magnetically and radiates his soul force to the patient, that patient is enabled more easily to achieve the end desired, which may be complete healing, or it may be the establishing of a state of mind which will enable the patient to live with himself and with his complaint, unhandicapped by the karmic limitations of the body. Or it may be enabling the patient to achieve with joy and facility 
the right liberation from body and through the portal of death to pass to complete health. This is from Esoteric Healing, pages seven and eight by Master Dwell Cool. Render yourself effective as a group member and healer. Therefore, we use the radiatory technique in group formation as a means of practicing loving group relations. As one group member said, the absence of any criticism, blame, judgment, or suspicion. As a means of developing group consciousness, as our group facilitator cautions us and guides us, Blend your aura with the group aura. As a service rendered in the spirit of self-forgetfulness and the practice of positive harmless, we use the group mantra with purity of motive inspired by a loving heart. As a technique to learn both radiation and magnetism within the protective aura of the group soul consciousness. We magnetize the ones we seek to aid. And finally, as a means of demonstrating the law of love. We find in the Tibetans teachings that group work is one of the methods to demonstrate the teachings of the Buddha, embodying the principle of wisdom and the Christ embodying the principle of love through group endeavor carried forward as a group to love all beings and to apprehend and understand the true significance of the Aquarian technique of group love and work. This is from Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 1. Our foundation, energy follows thought. Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 1, page 89. The secret of all true meditation work in its earlier stages is the power to visualize. This is the first stage to be mastered. Visualization is the initial step in the demonstration of the occult law that energy follows thought. Our foundation, practicing acting as if. Unselfish groups are very rare. Pure detached devotion in a human being is not rare, but to find it in a group is rare indeed. The submergence of personal interest in the good of the family or in that of another person is often to be found for the beauty of the human heart has manifested itself down the ages. To find such an attitude in a group of people and to see such a point of view maintained with an unbroken rhythm and demonstrating spontaneously and naturally, this will be the glory of the new age from Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 1. We work in group formation, creating group unity and group coherence through creative visualization and meditation. Our foundation, laws, principles, rules. The law of cause and effect called karma in the East governs all this, the causes of disease. Karma must be regarded in reality as the effect in the form life of our planet. 
of causes deep seated and hidden in the mind of God. The causes that we may trace in relation to disease and death are in reality only the working out of certain basic principles which govern, rightly or wrongly, who shall say, the life of God in form, and they must ever remain incomprehensible to man until such time as he takes the great initiation, which is symbolized for us in the transfiguration. All along in our studies, we shall be dealing with secondary causes and their effects, with the phenomenal results of those subjective effects which emanate from causes too far away for us to grasp. This should be admitted and grasped. This is the best man can do with his present mental apparatus. From Esoteric Healing, pages 14 and 15, Master Dracul, we seek to understand the laws and principles under which we live and move and have our being. We seek to learn and practice the rules for healing. The law of cause and effect is not to be understood as we now interpret it. The world of glamour is at this time so strong and the sense of illusion so potent and vital that we fail to see these basic laws in their true significance. The law of karma is not the law of retribution, as one would surmise as one reads the current books upon the subject. That is but one aspect of the working of the law of karma. The law of cause and effect is not to be understood as we now interpret it. There is to illustrate a law called the law of gravitation, which has long imposed itself upon the minds of men. Such a law exists, but it is only an aspect of a greater law, and its power can be, as we know, relatively offset. For each time that we see an aeroplane soaring overhead, we see a demonstration of the offsetting of this law by mechanical means, symbolizing the ease with which it can be surmounted by human beings. If they could but realize it, they are learning the ancient technique of which the power to levitate is one of the easiest and simplest initial exercises. The law of consequences is not the inevitable and set affair which modern thought surmises but is related to the laws of thought far more closely than has been believed. Towards an understanding of this, mental science has been groping. Its orientation and purposes are right and good and hopeful of results. Its conclusions and modes of work are at present woefully at fault and most misleading. This is from Esoteric Healing, pages 20 and 21. The law of cause and effect governs disease as it governs all else in manifestation. This is from Esoteric Healing, page 32. Karma is not an inevitable inescapable and dire happening. It can be offset, but this offsetting, particularly where disease is concerned, will include four lines of activity. One, determining the nature of the cause and the area in consciousness where it originated. Two, developing those qualities which are the polar opposite of the effect of cause. Three, practicing harmlessness so as to arrest the expression of the cause and to prevent any further Im implementing of the unfortunate condition. Taking the necessary physical steps which will produce the conditions which the soul desires. This is from Esoteric Healing, pages 296 to 297.
our foundation, master the case approach. These energies pour through the seven centers of the planetary body and are, as far as we are concerned, the seven ray energies. In relation to the will to harm, which can and does demonstrate as disease in all the four kingdoms in nature, you have the reason why I instituted among the esoteric students for whom I have made myself responsible, the development of harmlessness. It is the majoration for the offsetting of karma. From Esoteric Healing, page 296. Law 9 of Healing. Law 9. Perfection calls imperfection to the surface. Good drives evil always from the form of man in time and space. The method used by the perfect one and that employed by good is harmlessness. This is not negative, but perfect poise, a completed point of view, and divine understanding. This is from Esoteric Healing, page 295. Required of healers. Number 13, power to practice at all times complete harmlessness. The method used by the perfect ones, one is harmlessness. This, we are told, involves a positive expression of poise, an inclusive point of view, and divine understanding. How many healers combine these three qualities and also work through love? This is from Esoteric Healing, page 527. Our Foundation, Occult Meditation. Meditation is a te technique of the mind which eventually produces correct, unimpeded relationship. This is another name for alignment. It is therefore the establishment of a direct channel, not only between the one source, the monad, and its expression, the purified and controlled personality, but also between the seven centers in the human etheric vehicle. This is perhaps astonishingly to you, putting the results of meditation on the basis of physical or rather of etheric effects and may be regarded by you as indicating the very lowest phase of such results. This is due to the fact that you lay the emphasis upon your mental reaction to the produced alignment on the satisfaction you acquire from such an alignment in which you register a new world or worlds of phenomenon and on the new concepts and ideas which consequently impinge upon your mind. But the true results, as divine and as esoterically desirable, are correct alignment, right relationship, and clear channels for the seven energies in the microcosmic system thereby bringing about eventually a full expression of divinity. All the seven centers in the etheric vehicle of the Christ were rightly adjusted, correctly aligned, truly awakened and functioning and properly receptive of all the seven streams of energy coming from the seven planetary centers. These put him in rapport therefore and in full realized contact with the one in whom he lived and moved and had his being. This is from Esoteric Healing, pages 620 and 621. In studying Esoteric Healing, we are at this point in our group study and service focusing on the astral body.
because the astral body is for the majority of humanity the major determining factor to be considered it is an outstanding cause of ill health as healers we must still the waters the turmoil of the astral plane so that the astral field is a clear and still and smooth as glass and can effectively reflect soul consciousness. We have paused in our studies to collect our ideas, experiences, and understanding and share with you through this series, Cultivating Positive Harmlessness modes and methods of developing and engaging the mind through music and movement, controlling the emotions, memes and messages and mediums for controlling the lower mind, mantras and meditation, developing the higher mind. As the mind is the slayer of the real, but only the relative real, as we're told in esoteric psychology too. We're pausing in our study and contemplation as a means of achieving personality integration and practicing positive harmlessness all along the path from the birth through the transfiguration. How will I know if I am ready for this type of group work? It will be obvious to you that if there is a good mental equipment and a sound educational training, that there will be a balancing sense of proportion and inter interpretive capacity, patience to wait till right understanding can be developed, and a happy sense of humor. This is from Esoteric Psychology, Volume 2, page 465. The Great Invocation. La Gran invocación desde el punto de luz en la mente de dios que afluya luz a las mentes de los hombres que la luz descienda a la tierra desde el punto de amor en el corazón de dios que afluya amor a los corazones de los hombres que cristo retorne a la tierra desde el centro donde la voluntad de Dios es conocida, que el propósito guíe a las pequeñas voluntades de los hombres, el propósito que los maestros conocen y sirven. Desde el centro, que llamamos la raza de los hombres, que se realice el plan de amor y de luz, y selle la puerta donde se halla el mal. Que la luz el amor y el poder restablezcan el plan en la tierra. Oh. 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 
These are our foundations as we work to cultivate harmlessness. We're sharing our practice, our study, and our impressions in this series, which will follow along with part two, finding inspiration to practice harmlessness. Part three, outlining the path to utter harmlessness. And part four, a conversation on the study and practice with the esoteric circle with graduates and students of the Quest Universal program of the Moria Federation as they share their perspectives. For more information about our study groups and the monthly Healing Guardian Meditation, our group approach at the time of the full moon, contact esoterichealing at moriafederation.com. Gratitude to our readers and gratitude to you for listening and following this series.